President Trump did not shy away from his attacks on the 2020 Democratic candidates at his rally last night. Mr. Trump admitted that he did watch the Democratic debates Tuesday and Wednesday night, but said he wasn't particularly entertained by what he heard. That was long, long television. And the Democrats spent more time attacking Barack Obama than they did attacking me, practically. CBS News White House correspondent Paula Reed was at the rally last night and joins us now from the White House. Paula, nice to see you. The rally felt like a rebuttal to the Democratic debates from the past week. Which issues and which candidates did the president really focus on? Well, specifically, he named Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden. He took shots at both of them, saying that the former vice president really didn't seem to know what was going on. Of course, he revived the Pocahontas controversy. He used that nickname again to refer to Senator Elizabeth Warren and revisited the controversy over her alleging Native American heritage. But he also tried out some new material. Specifically, he is trying to highlight the struggles of inner cities in America as a way to attack Democrats. For example, we know he has been attacking Elijah Cummings, a congressman whose district includes uh, portions of Baltimore. But he continued this uh, last night in Cincinnati without mentioning uh, Representative Cummings. Instead, he just talked about Baltimore and other inner cities. And he said, look, all of these inner cities have been run by Democrats exclusively for decades. And he's trying to make the case to voters that the reason there are so many issues in the inner cities with crime, with drugs, with poverty is because they are under Democratic control. We'll see if that actually resonates uh, with voters. But that's something he spent an extensive amount of time on last night in Cincinnati. In fact, actually, there was one protester at one point, and it took them a long time to clear this guy out. So the president had to kind of cede attention. He stops talking when there's a protester. And after about five minutes, I think the president found a way to pivot from the protester back to this message. He just finally went up to the microphone and said, hey, wait a second. Do you have a Democrat mayor here in Cincinnati? Got a big, big laugh from the crowd. Mm. How did last night's rally compare to the one in Greenville, North Carolina last month, where we heard the center back chants broke out? Well, before the rally started, I had a chance to speak with many of the president's supporters in attendance. I asked them how they felt about that chant, and the majority of people I spoke with said they had no problem with these chants of send her back, and most of them told me that they would even join in if that started up again. But last night, we did not hear that chant. The president did not mention any uh, of those four female lawmakers by name. We did hear some other chants, a lot of USA, USA. And when the president brought up his former Democratic rival, Hillary Clinton, uh, calling her crooked Hillary, the chant of lock her up, which is one you frequently hear at these rallies, uh, that did come up for a few moments. But nothing about send her back or the four female lawmakers who he had attacked in Greenville. Paula, there are reports out that the Justice Department won't prosecute former FBI Director James Comey over the release of his memos to a reporter. Remind us what this is all about. So this is all having to do with an ongoing inspector general investigation. That's the internal watchdog within the Justice Department. They investigate uh, matters and how the Justice Department handles certain cases. They looked at how the Justice Department handled the investigation to Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. They were also looking into the origin to the Russia investigation. The inspector general is also asked to look at the fact that the former FBI director uh, took some memos and passed them along to a colleague, uh, a fellow lawyer. The Comey subsequently peace. testified that he believed that these memos could potentially, could potentially um, spur the appointment of a special counsel. Now, subsequently, these memos, these were deemed to be confidential, the lowest level of classification. And according to sources, the inspector general offered uh, offered an opinion, which does, does not have to be taken by the Justice Department, an opinion that Comey could be prosecuted for this. But what's, what's important here is we don't yet have this inspector general report. These are eventually released to the public. And I got to tell you, Alex, the inspector general does not leak. Uh, I trust me, I've tried to get information from them about <laughs> and you're a tough one. You're a tough one, Paul. Yeah, right. <laughs> I try, and they don't crack. So there are concerns, though, with with this leaking out the way it has, uh, without us having access to the report and the nuance of the re recommendation. Uh, that that potentially there could be people leaking this information uh, to damage the former FBI director. The way some people uh, in the president's inner circle have tried to use the Justice Department to punish the president's detractors. But uh, Comey has suggested that folks should wait until they get the inspector general report and I would advise our viewers to do the same to see exactly what it was uh, a what it was the former FBI director did and if he was careless and specifically what it was the inspector general recommended all right Paula Reed thank you